This lesson deals with a low noise inverting amplifier example. You can find these notes in the ECE202 ebook in chapter 12, starting on page 21. Suppose that we add a capacitor to the high pass filter we had on page 11 of this chapter. Could you solve for V out over V in of S, use that to sketch the Bode plots, and then verify the results with piecewise? This is an inverting amplifier, so the gain is minus Z2 over Z1. Since I have things in parallel, I'm going to write Z2 as 1 over Y2. The Y2 then is equal to SC2 plus 1 over R2, and Z1 is R1 plus 1 over SC1. Let's multiply numerator and denominator by R2, so we get R2 over SC2 R2 plus 1. And let's multiply this numerator and denominator by SC1, so I'll get SC1 divided by SC1 R1 plus 1. The value of R2 is 100K, C1 is 1 microfarad, C2 is 100 picofarads, R2 is 100K, C1 is 1 microfarad, and R1 is 10K. So multiplying all the numerator terms out, I wind up getting 100 milli times s. The denominator terms, this turns out to be 10 micro, and this turns out to be 10 milli. We like to make our leading coefficient of s with a 1 coefficient, so let's pull out a 10 micro, let's pull out a 10 milli. Then I have this term, just s, and then 1 divided by 10 micro is 100k, and 1 divided by 10 milli is 100. This term turns out to be 10 to the 6, so you get minus 10 to the 6 times s over s plus 100, and then divided by s plus 100k. To sketch the Bode plots of our transfer function, we need to replace s by j omega. So we've got minus 10 to the sixth, j omega over j omega plus 100, and then j omega plus 100k. Got to make this a 1, so let's pull out 100 and let's pull out 100k. We've got minus 10 to the sixth divided by 100 and 100k, j omega. Then I have a 1, and then I have j omega divided by 100. I have a 1 and j omega divided by 100k. With this constant in front here, I've got 10 to the sixth divided by 10 to the fifth times 10 to the 2. 10 to the minus 1, so I get 0.1 times j omega, 1 over 1 plus j omega over 100, and then 1 over 1 plus j omega over 100k. These three terms we actually sketched before on page 11 of this chapter. So I can just grab that Bode plot because multiplying a transfer function by an expression is simply adding that Bode plot for magnitude or angle. My previous results from page 11 is this curve and then extending it this way. And then this form 5 comes over at 100k and then drops it. 20 dB per decade. I'm going to add this result to this one. It's going to lift this up because I'm adding zero to the previous results. And that's going to bring this curve down because we're subtracting off at this point, minus 20 dB per decade. Likewise for the angle we had previously on page 11 was this, coming down to here and then leveling out. Now we have a form 5 at 100K, so we'll be down 45 degrees, go back a decade to 10K at zero, go forward a decade to one meg, and you'll be at minus 90 degrees. We're going to add this to the previous result. I'm really going to bring this down because this is zero, just add it. So we're going to shift this down, and then we're going to start to roll down at minus 45 degrees per decade now at 10K instead of leveling out, and then level out again at one meg. The total phase angle then would be minus 270 degrees. Let's call a low noise circuit because of the area underneath this magnitude curve. We'll see in later courses that the overall noise that you hear at the output, this would be kind of like the noise between radio stations or between songs, you hear this kind of a hushing sound. It's caused by the noise generated by the components in our circuit typically resistors and transistors, which are inside the op-amp. The smaller this area is, the lower the noise is. So since we can't hear things below 20 hertz, and can't hear it much above 20 kilohertz, if we limit the bandwidth to this, then that'll be the least amount of area underneath the curve, so we still have our audio amplifier. Next, let's verify our results with piecewise. I went and grabbed the file on page 15 of this chapter where we were plotting the results of a audio frequency inverting amplifier. And I added a capacitor between nodes three and four of 100 picofarads, which is our circuit. I also changed the frequency range now from 0.1 hertz to one megahertz. Now how many decades is that? So from 0.1 to one, to 10, to 100, to 1,000, to 10,000, to 100,000, to a million is seven decades. So take 200 and divide it by seven, you get around 29. So I get 200 data points on the screen. I also marked the 3 dB frequency. I had a gain here of 20 dB, so being down 3 dB is 17. And that was at 15.734, given the points that I have. And we hand calculated this to be 15.9 kilohertz. What we really have here is a combination of a high pass filter, and then we added a capacitor to eventually bring the curve back down again. We have a low pass combined with a high pass. And we call this a wide range band pass filter. We can also take a look at the phase angle. And again, we see that we had what we had before, and then now we're adding another pull and we're down 45 degrees from this leveling point over here at 180 degrees at 15.849 kilohertz. Again, very close to our calculated value of 15.9 K. And lastly, let me make one comment about the general form of what we just did. We combined a first order high pass with a first order low pass 
and be what's called a wide band bandpass filter. The general form of the transfer function is some k times s over s plus alpha 1 divided by s plus alpha 2. And these are some of the properties of a low noise inverting amplifier.